Hello and welcome to the My VA Dayton podcast coming to you from Dayton, Ohio. This is the show where we talk with veterans in the Western Ohio region to share their stories and share what's happening at the Dayton VA Medical Center. I'm Scott Lease, your host with co-host Greg Tucker. We have with us today via phone a Vietnam U.S. Army veteran, Dave Freidenberg. He served as an administrative support specialist at Headquarters Battalion during his service to our nation. Some of the places included various Army bases in the U.S., where, of course, he received his advanced administrative and logistics training before fulfilling his obligation to Uncle Sam. He returned to Ohio, where he continued other vocations that positively impacted his community. Welcome to the show, Dave. Hey, good morning. Thank you. How are you this morning? We are doing super, as I think you are. It's a beautiful day out today, a wonderful uh, spring-like day here in the middle of February. Uh, so we're, we're enjoying it. Hey, but before we get to know a little bit more about you, we're going to put you to the test. Oh, boy. The test is early in the morning. Yes, this early in the morning because it's now time to play Don't Tell Me, I Think I Know That. This is the game where we put our guests to the test of their knowledge of military trivia. It's also a game where our listeners can play along to see if their minds are mired in mounds of military minutiae as ours are. Are you ready to take this challenge, Dave? I am ready for the challenge. Dave. All right. That's, that's what I like to hear. Somebody who's, uh, who's ready to take the challenge on, on a bright, sunny morning. So here's your first question. How long did World War II last? Would it be A, six years, B, 16 years, C, four years, or D, two years? I believe the correct answer is let's go with A. A, correct. That's six years. Yes, World War II started September 1st, 1939 and ended September 2nd, 1945. Now, here's a bonus. Uh, What actually was in connection with September 2nd, 1945 that ended uh, World War II? So that would actually be VJ Day, Victory Over Japan. Yes, so that actually would be VJ Day, uh, Victory Over Japan, which actually determined the very end of World War II. So now here is your second question. Better to fight for something than to die for nothing is a quote from which general officer? Would it be A, Blackjack Pershing, B, George Patton, C, George Custer, or D, Ulysses S. Grant? Oh, it was definitely B, George Patton. That's correct. Yes, George S. Patton is best known for his leadership of the U.S. military, uh, Third Army in France and Germany, following the Allied invasion of Normandy in June 1944. He was called, in his time, America's fightingest general. Uh, Now, here is your third and final question. You're doing great. Two out of three so far. Let's see if you can make it three out of three. Let's okay. go for 100%. That's right. Uh, what light utility vehicle replaced the Army Jeep? Would it be A, the Striker, B, the Water Buffalo, C, the Humvee, or D, the Cadillac Coupe de Ville? Oh, definitely C, the Humvee. That's correct. Fantastic. Yes, the Humvee replaced the Jeep and can be configured as a troop carrier, armament carrier, shelter carrier, ambulance, tow missile carrier, and scout vehicle. So you did a fantastic job. You got that 100%. So, Greg, what has Dave won for playing our game today? Well, Dave, for playing this game today and getting all the answers correctly, you have won for industrial strength chip clips. Now, these chip clips are made by NASA, and they're designed to serve you on your trips here and beyond. Now, Dave, since you are not here in the studio with us, you will have to pick them up at your nearest CBOC. And those are coveted chip clips. Everybody loves those chip clips. So uh, just be careful. They are industrial strength. I'm sure I will enjoy them thoroughly. Yeah, I bet you've seen them once or twice, right? I have. Yeah, okay. Well, now you've got a set of four just for you. 
Uh, Thank so, you very much. So we're going to take a quick break here. Uh, when we come back, uh, we'll hear more from Dave about his civilian career and other adventures after his military service. Hope, where are you hiding? I search for you in the seconds, the minutes of each and every day. Hear me as I call out to you. Take my hand. Lift me up as I lift up others. Welcome me home, father, mother, sister, brother, son, daughter. Hear us now. Alone we stood, divided we fell. No longer. Now we choose to make the connection. Our new mission lies within. Visit maketheconnection.net to learn more. And we're back with Vietnam and U.S. Army veteran Dave Freidenberg. So, Dave, in high school, um, I understand you played a lot of sports or, or really active in sports. Uh, what high school did you go to? I went to uh, Goshen High School in Goshen, Indiana. And, my, and, uh, and what, what did you play? There. Played a little bit of basketball, some baseball, um, mainly those two sports. Uh, dabbled in a lot of other things too as far as sports wise we didn't really get too excited about those but basically basketball and baseball education wise i guess if this is appropriate at this time we, uh, i took a typing class when i was in high school just to fill a, a, a credit i guess as a sophomore and uh, it turned out that that wound up being a good strong part of my future when it came to the military uh, how did you end up in Richmond? Well, believe it or not, uh, coming to Richmond was kind of unique. Uh, the company I worked for, which was a grocery store, they uh, opened a store in Richmond, Indiana. And I'd never heard of Richmond, Indiana, but uh, we wound up down here in 1976 and kind of been here ever since. Dave, after you, upon coming here from uh, Wisconsin, was it a job offer that brought you to Indiana? Well, no, no. Actually, from coming from Wisconsin, I was I was only ten years old, so it was my parents I had a job situation, and there wasn't a lot of jobs in Wisconsin, and so we uh, we moved to uh, Indiana, and uh, so he could get a job here and been down this area ever since. Oh, okay. We're gonna go ahead and move to after high school. So after high school, everyone was receiving the draft notice, correct? Correct. Yes, sir. sir. I got mine. Okay. Now, it's an amazing thing about your draft notice versus just looking at the notice and saying, I'm going to report. You did something a little different, and that is you did a volunteer move that changed your job description that you were initially assigned? When I got, when I got in there, the, uh, it was obvious uh, for the most part that we were all going to be heading off to Vietnam and all that stuff. And in talking to one of the recruiters and everything, up, um, it's actually in Port Leonard Wood at the time, um, we talked at, uh, with my background from subsistence to storage and that kind of thing that it would make some sense to consider that at least he talked me into it and he gave me a good talk and i think it worked out pretty good overall uh, so i went ahead and signed up for the three-year deal and uh, it, uh, it worked out okay for me now from what i understand you initially wanted to use what you had done in civilian life and that's logistics or something to that effect yes yes i uh i was actually was in the grocery business so my, my after my training in Fort Leonard Wood, I wound up at uh, Fort Lee, Virginia, in a subsistence storage specialist class, which was class one warehousing and grocery and the commissary type stuff. And then wound up down after that in Atlanta Army Depot, and uh, we did warehousing and that kind of thing. Learned how to drive a rough terrain forklift uh, for. Uh, 
on board of the ships and that kind of thing, and then got shipped off to Vietnam. So, so Dave, tell us a little bit about why you chose to go into the army specifically. You know, you you, you got the call for the draft, uh, but but well, you, it or, well, yeah, believe it or not, I, I got drafted in the army, and that's where, that's why I say when I went to uh, Port Leonardwood, Missouri, that's when I actually was talking to a, a recruiter down there, and that's when he kind of talked me into uh, considering an option. And I think maybe it was partly because they had a, a need in that area, which is why it kind of came on so strong. And it made sense at the time. Hey, listen, when you're 19 years old, you don't know a whole lot. You haven't grown up completely yet. And you're faced with that situation. You make lifetime decisions, and I still think it was a good one for me. We're going to uh, move on far as with the uh, experience as an admin in the Army. Once you've served the country and you returned back to civilian life, is that where the journalism part of your story picks up? Well, yeah, and in a way, I, I had, I don't know, maybe nine months or so left to finish when I got back. And they sent me to United States Continental Army Command out of uh, Fort Monroe, Virginia where I became, a, of all things, a classified mail courier, I guess which is kind of like a postman, but uh, we delivered uh, classified and secret documents all over the base. So that was a, another administrative type thing, logistical thing that really kind of helped form my future, I guess, when you look at it that way. So you're really kind of a jack of all trades in the military. You've had a lot of different uh, jobs, a lot of different experiences. I, I, uh, I turned out to be a jack of all trades yesterday. Yeah. So <laughs> tell us about some of the bases you were stationed at. Uh, where all where all were you uh, stationed and deployed to? Along that, oh, well, that first took my base in Fort Leonard, Missouri. Took my AIT at Fort Lee, Virginia. Went to. Uh, extended classes uh, at Atlanta Army Depot and then shipped off to Vietnam. And then when I came back, uh, basically I went to uh, uh, Fort Monroe, uh, Virginia, and that's where I, uh, where I finished up. Dave, tell us about your most memorable experience uh, during your tour of duty. Uh, you know, you, you've you had a lot of different uh, fun jobs and so forth, but I, I got to ask, uh, uh, was there anything um, very memorable about Vietnam you want to share with our audience? Well, uh, probably the most unique thing about my time over there is when I got, well, there was nine of us that got shipped to uh, Quinn Yon, uh, and eight of them got orders to go to play two, uh, and then my orders didn't come through until the next day. They were delayed a day for some reason. And when I got there, um, when I checked into the battalion headquarters, the guy says, uh, I don't need you. And, you know, you hear the stories when you're that age about you, they don't need you. They ship you out in the, the bush and all that kind of stuff. So he asked me, he said, can you type? And I said, well, I took a typing class in high school. So, yeah, I guess I can. He said, let me see what you can do. And he sent me down at a typewriter. And, I typed out the, I backspace and typed out the main line for the battalion. And he said, that's good enough. I'll keep you right here with me. And that's how I became a battalion clerk. Ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. So those skills, they paid off. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's amazing how things work for you in your future. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the things that you've done, and that is after you've gotten out, we went through the part as far as with the journalism. It was kind of a little bit of journalism, but not quite journalistic. But you also do a lot of work as far as in the community. Go ahead and tell us about that. What was that again? Repeat the question. Uh, you do a lot of work in the community as far as helping and supporting veterans. If you could share that with our listeners. Sure, we're happy to. Uh, I got involved with the uh, local Veterans of Foreign Wars organization here in Richmond um, back in the mid-90s and uh, got really active and found out how important that was to me. And uh, 
wound up becoming a post uh, commander for a couple of years, moved on to the district level. And uh, the whole purpose behind that service is to help local veterans and mainly help them understand that you, they need us, we need them. And uh, it's easy It's easy for veterans to just kind of sit back and, you know, <clears throat> with themselves and their own thoughts. And sometimes it's important to share those thoughts with people that had similar experiences or that you can just talk to another veteran, and that's kind of what it came out to be. And I've been involved in that ever since. I've done several things at the state level, held several positions there. So that, I just love that part of what I do for the for the veterans. So, Dave, uh, you know, you've been working with the VFW for a long time, um, and uh, i got to ask, are you guys aware of the PACT Act, and are you helping veterans uh, uh, learn more about the uh, promise to address comprehensive toxins? Absolutely. We certainly are. The PACT Act was uh, well, well received by the veteran community. One of our uh, uh, members of our stakeholder committee here is also our county service officer, Ron Weedy, and he... Uh, he does a tremendous job down here at our, at our county administration building with getting veterans uh, into the system and helping them with their issues and getting paperwork turned in, whatever their needs might be, getting a DD-214, the whole thing. So from a stakeholder committee side, we've got a really good, strong group of people. Well, that's fantastic. We really appreciate all the uh, help you are, are providing other veterans out there with that uh, because it is imperative that every every veteran become aware of this new legislation and the opportunities that it presents for uh, expanding health care for, for veterans um, across the nation, that there are so many veterans out there before who weren't eligible for health care through the VA uh, that now um, are going to receive the care that they so richly deserve. And we appreciate all that you're doing to help educate those veterans and, and help them get connected with the VA and uh, in particular the Dayton VA. Uh, but we're going to take a quick break here. Uh, when we come back, we'll hear more from Dave uh, about his uh, experiences. With the signing of the PACT Act, VA now has a huge list of presumptive conditions attributed to burn pits or other toxins. They also have a new extensive list of locations where they presume these exposures occurred. With regard to presumptive conditions, the list includes brain cancer, gastrointestinal cancer of any type, glioblastoma, head cancer of any type, kidney cancer, lymphatic cancer of any type, lymphoma of any type, melanoma, neck cancer, pancreatic cancer, reproductive cancer of any type, and respiratory cancer of any type. Illnesses that are now presumptive include asthma that was diagnosed after service, chronic bronchitis, COPD, chronic rhinitis, chronic sinusitis, constrictive bronchiolitis or obliterative bronchiolitis, emphysema, granulomatous disease, ILD, pleuritis, pulmonary fibrosis, and sarcoidosis. Locations for presumptive exposure on or after August 2nd, 1990 include Bahrain, Iraq, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, UAE, and the airspace above any of these locations. To find out more information about how the PACT Act affects you and your VA benefits, you can also visit VA's comprehensive website about the PACT Act by visiting va.gov slash PACT, where you'll also be able to apply for VA health care or apply for or submit a supplemental claim for VA disability. Or you can always call VA's information hotline 24-7 at 1-800-698-2411. And we're back with Army veteran and Vietnam veteran Dave Freidenberg. So, Dave, uh, if you could please tell us, our listeners, about the experience with the Dayton VA. Well, I tell you what, it's been a really a fantastic experience for me. I I was fortunate uh, with uh, working for the county here. I had good insurance for 12, 28, 30 years, but I, and I never used the VA for anything specifically so after i got done i didn't have any insurance and i thought you know i need to 
get down and sign up and get some get the VA to take care of me a little bit, you know. And and it's been nothing but a top-notch experience. I've had nothing but the best care uh, since I've been there. Um, they took me under their wings uh, from day one. I got assigned to a, a team, a local team here at Orsibach, and uh, going through the systems. And the, um, prior to uh, getting out and meeting the VA, I, I did have some prostate cancer and had gotten that taken care of. And the, the VA did a good job of taking care of me on a disability rating while I had the uh, prostate cancer. And then after it got cured, it cut back, but I was totally fine with that too. So my experience with the VA has been top notch. And and you said you actually uh, went to the VA because you didn't have insurance. Well, how did you find out about VA benefits to begin with? Well, I had, I'd known about it because I had the Agent Orange testing and everything done through the VA some years back. And, and again, because of people I know, Ron Weedy and one and some others, that uh, I knew that what what the VA was all about. I just didn't need it. Was, and, and then when that need came up, that's when it became important to me to need it. And again, I, I repeat, it's been just a top-notch good thing for me. I've had nothing but good success with the VA. I've been back and forth to Dayton several times for x-ray and things like that. Not right, much. right. Well, you know, you're talking about you didn't you didn't have a need at first, then that need arose, or or you, you felt like you had a need. But uh, um, there are so many veterans out there still who uh, feel they don't need uh, the benefits, and and then uh, don't apply. Well, we encourage them to apply in advent of those needs. You don't want to wait until uh, you have a need to apply for your for your earned benefits. Uh, so we encourage it. I know yeah. you guys. I know you guys do that now. Uh, what would you tell? other veterans out there uh, in in line with that that uh, you know you don't you don't want to wait you want to go ahead and uh, apply now uh, for for when the need arises uh, before the need arises I should say um, what what do you well, what do you that, tell fellow veterans well I think you're I think you're saying it quite right because I have told several veterans that probably the mistake I made was I did not get hooked in earlier and, and you need to get your name in the system, you know, get it, get, you know, start using it, uh, do what you need to do. I know you got other things, you got good insurance and all that kind of stuff, but you're a veteran. And Absolutely. Veterans belong in the VA system. Uh, if, you know, if nothing else, you, you just got to get your VA card, get in the system and let them know who you are and what you're about. And I've told several people that, and and several people have signed up uh, in the VA system since I've been, since I've told them that. So that's probably one of the proudest things I've. Uh, well, that's I've, great. I've we're we're really we're system. really proud of you and happy to hear that. Um, you know, you you talked about uh, the fact that uh, you had exposure to Agent Orange, and that um, you know you you went through that process. Uh, now we've got a whole host of veterans out there who have. Uh, a, Along with the Agent Orange veterans uh, who may uh, have gone through this process before but uh, were, were denied for whatever reason, but now we have the PACT Act. It's a whole new game, uh, especially for those folks that are post-9-11 veterans that have had exposure to, to burn pits uh, and, and other environmental issues that have given them presumptive conditions. Uh, but even if you don't have the presumptive conditions, if you are... Um, if you're eligible, uh, and, and we encourage everyone to go to va.gov slash PAC to learn more about the PACT Act and what areas of operations uh, and what presumptive conditions qualify you. Uh, but if you were in a, a theater of operation during certain windows, uh, that qualifies you. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have the presumptive conditions. You still want to file a claim with the VA, uh, the Veteran Benefit Administration, to see if we can go ahead and get you on that registry and get get you pre-qualified and get you eligible eligible for uh, veteran health care, VHA health care. So uh, absolutely uh, appreciate everything you're doing, Dave, uh, to make sure that our veterans out in the community are aware of this and are taking advantage of this opportunity uh, with this new legislation that just went into effect the beginning of this year. So you know, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't, have, couldn't have said that better myself. 
And I know that uh, while the VBA is flooded right now with claims, I think at, at one point they were getting 3,000 a day. Uh, that, that's, that's a huge amount. But uh, what people don't realize is that this new legislation ac actually is impacting up to six million veterans and that uh, the VA secretary has uh, made it a call that each one of these veterans will be contacted, uh, notified of this opportunity and encouraging, encouraging them to uh, file a claim and get the, the get the care that they need. And even, again, even if uh, even if you don't need it today, you don't know what the future will bring, uh, where one of those con conditions, presumptive conditions, will come up, and and you're going to, you can then definitely get that care that you uh, need from the VA. But uh, again, Dave, I want to thank you so much uh, for for all that you're doing. Tell us uh, if you could if, before we uh, wrap up today. Tell us a little bit about um, your experience with the the VSO, the Veteran Service Office, and um, and, and what they're doing for veterans uh, today, especially with, with, the, with the VFWs. Well, thank, thanks for the question. That, that really is something good because we have, in Indiana, we have a very strong veteran service organization assisting our veterans at our state level. Uh, we, we employ about five people at, at the state VFW that services that, and they, they help train our local county uh, service officers and that kind of thing to get them accredited uh, along with the American Legion and everybody else. It just kind of helps get the correct information out where it needs to be and so that those DSOs can put the correct information out to where we need it. And, again, that's part of what we try to do from the stakeholders committee meeting when we have our meetings is gather information and disseminate it out to the people so that they're aware of what's going on. Um, people don't realize how easy some things are uh, with the VA. They think it's a troublesome situation, and it's really not. Uh, those days are over. I think the uh, system within itself has gotten 200% uh, better from what it used to be. Uh, the, the stories that people tell just don't happen anymore. So. We're terribly proud of that situation with the VA. Absolutely. Well, yeah, again, we appreciate everything that you're doing uh, uh, through your work through the VFW, through the VSO, uh, and just and talking to your fellow veterans. And uh, again, uh, we've been talking with uh, Vietnam and Army veteran Dave uh, Freidenberg uh, via phone, and uh, we're truly uh, enjoying all the stories that uh, he has and, and the stories uh, from veterans like you. So thanks again for sharing your time with us today, Dave. Well, and thank you very much. We appreciate the uh, opportunity to uh, say a few words with us, spread a little bit of cheer for some people, hopefully. And uh, go out there and uh, reach out to your VA people, your service officers, go to your local VAs, and uh, get involved because it's a very big part of your life. All thank right. you for your service, Dave. Yes, thank you very much, Dave. I was in the military. I didn't know that when I left, I was eligible for health care through the VA. I thought you had to be disabled or been wounded. Another vet told me I should check it out. Now I have the care I need at the Dayton VA. Don't wait another day to see how the VA may help you. I'm a vet and it's my VA. Make it your VA today. Call 937-268-6511 extension 2159 to enroll or visit dayton.va.gov. Hey, I just want to remind all our listeners that the PACT Act legislation signed by President Biden recently went into effect. It is the promise to address comprehensive toxins, which is affecting over 6 million veterans across the nation. We highly encourage everyone to learn more about the PACT Act. You can go to va.gov slash PACT to learn about all the our areas of operation, all the theaters, all the presumptive conditions that qualify veterans. That website is www.va.gov slash PACT. Uh, we really do want everyone to know about this and take that opportunity to register. Our veterans put everything on the line to protect our freedom. We may never be able to repay them for their sacrifice, but we can show them just how much we appreciate all they've done. Every day, hundreds of people just like you volunteer to help our veterans. 
You can help by simply sharing your time, lending a warm smile, a supportive hand, or a sympathetic ear to someone who needs it. Everyone can do something to make our veterans know how much we appreciate their service. What will you do? We want to say thanks again to our special guests for taking time today to share their story. We truly enjoy hearing stories from veterans from across the region and learning more about how they found care through the Dayton VA Medical Center. And as always, we want to thank our listeners for joining us and remind them if they are a veteran and are not enrolled to enroll with the Veterans Health Administration to receive health care benefits through the Dayton VA Medical Center. It's easy and it doesn't cost a thing. You just need to be a veteran. The simplest way to start enrollment is to call our enrollment and eligibility office at 937-268-6511, extension 4105. They can schedule an appointment for you to come to the Dayton campus or help make an appointment at one of the surrounding community-based outpatient clinics located at Springfield, Richmond, Lima, and Middletown. Again, that number is 937-268-6511, extension 4105. Veterans may also enroll by visiting www.choose.va.gov slash health. While there, you can choose from applying online or by phone or by mail. It's just that simple, really. As I said before, it doesn't cost a thing to apply. So what are you waiting for? Call us today. Or if you know of a veteran who is not enrolled, have them call to start taking advantage of this benefit. If you're a veteran, it's your VA. Sign up today. Join us again for another episode of My VA Dayton with the Dayton VA Medical Center. Our episodes drop the 1st and 15th of each month. I'm Scott Lees with your co-host, Greg Tucker. Thanks again for listening to My VA Dayton.